Hello lords and ladies, welcome back to Cartoon Hangout, your place for all things cartoon. Coming off the two-part premiere of Selectera, you'd think that the next episode would revolve around something smaller, plot-wise. Well, in a way, the trade does, this time featuring the new Shane gang looking to expand their arsenal, which is a smart move considering they're up against Black. But they end up embroiled in some truly shady trading going on between a merchant and Black, leading them to sneak into his headquarters to rescue not only Eli's slug jewels, but the other slugs being turned into ghouls. Not something you'd expect to see them get into by episode 3, right? The usual idea with these types of shows is to start off strong, establish a general plot for the season as well as a villain, then dive headfirst into a series of one-off episodes that are interspersed with episodes devoted to the season's story. And we'll get to those episodes, but it's nice to follow up almost immediately with the main baddies. It helps that this happens so soon because it reinforces the idea that Black is not to be messed with, as one can see by how lucky the gang was to escape with their lives by the end of the episode. And I believe though can't confirm that this is one of many times Eli's connections to his slugs, something inherently weird to other slingers, will get he and his friends into some kind of trouble. As great as the other characters are, it is strange how only Eli ever truly stopped to consider the feelings of his slugs. We gotta go back and get him. What is it with him and his slugs? In a way, he's the Ash Ketchum of Selectera, which is a really apt comparison because in my episode 1 review, you'll recall I ended up comparing this show to Pokemon. I think such a plot point is important to foster early because of the controversial idea of shooting living creatures at high speeds from a gun-like blaster. I don't have a big problem with it, but maybe some parents would. So a character who values his ammo as living creatures first and weapons second, it's probably a good start at maybe easing some concerns. Of course, it didn't stop parents from hating Pokemon, but what are you going to do? A great new character introduced this episode is a villain with probably the goofiest name while still being cool, and that is Diablos El Nacho. I haven't a clue what that translates to, but you have to admit he's got a silly name. The closest I could come up with is Devil of the Nacho, and the only nachos I know are the chips and cheese, so... Yeah. Moving past that, he really is one of my favorite characters in Slugterra. The character just exudes toughness. I mean, do you want to know how tough he is? <laughs> tough enough to freaking dodge out of the way of the slugs and then punch a ram stone. The dude couldn't get any cooler if he tried. At this point in the story, we don't really know more about him, but just from my vague recollection, I do believe he has a decent backstory in later episodes. We'll just have to wait and see, but for now, I am excited that he's finally been introduced. He'll provide a great nemesis for the Shane gang outside of Black and his random cronies. I really enjoyed where this episode went, and not much felt forced or out of place. It was a smart story decision to make a move against Black, if just to let us viewers really know that he won't be easy to fight. It gives a real incentive for our heroes to get stronger, which is all you can ask of in any action cartoon. Anyway, what did you think of this episode? I hope you're watching this series alongside me, and if you aren't, why not? Let me know in the comments below. Oh, and question of the day. What is your favorite slug introduced thus far? Thanks for watching and take care.